Hey, hello. Um, dot files. I know I said this. So basically, um, I went to this blog um, about dot files. A bit of homage to um, Paul Irish there, if you're familiar with his work. Um, yeah, so I basically just read loads and loads of dot files and found out what they did and stuff like that. But um, wrote about that here in this blog post. And what I've just done now is um, the .osx file, which is slightly different. So basically, um, I took a copy of Paul's repo from, I think he originally took it from Matthias. So, yeah, so let's concentrate on this .osx file. So basically what I did was I just read over this, and, and then anything that I wasn't really 100% on or I didn't really want to do, I just put... Um, hashtag in front of it so it didn't get executed and then I could always you know when I did find out what it did if I wanted it and I can just take that out so let's go through some of this stuff um, so again straight away I'm not really sure what that does ask for the administrator password up front so maybe that's like sudo command so super user do um, We'll ask for the password once rather than every single time. I don't know, maybe someone can help me out with that. Um, okay, and so yeah, I guess this is what it's doing. So we'll keep it, keep it there until it's finished. So yeah, it's going to run all these commands as a super user, I guess. So disable the transparency in the menu bar. Um, I'm not sure if that's this menu bar or finder, but either way, I'm not really sure that's gone transparent. Doesn't look like it has actually. But that, or maybe it has. I don't know. Maybe we could see a comparison that would be good for that. Um, time machine, the volume icons have gone, but um, as well, like before I executed this dot file um, I'd already been using this computer for a while so there's already been a lot of settings that I've probably set um, and that aren't included in this so or are included in this but I'd already done anyway um, okay so disable the opening and closing window animations so if you're familiar with you know when you minimize this normally it doesn't do that it does this like animation that is quite long and can even be can be even longer if you hold the shift one. So that's the work. Yes. So you can do that for some reason. Uh, I guess it would have been handy for the developers to test when they were doing the animation to see it running. Anyway, um, okay. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what Coco applications are. Let's have a quick look. Um, expand the save panel by default sure what that is seems like a good idea so left it in again print panel I don't really do much printing these days but again sounds good save disk not to iCloud that's brilliant most of the time I just want to maybe open a quick text document and just save something quickly to my desktop or wherever um, I don't save to the iCloud let's see what's bringing up okay so again, I've got to, I'm not really sure I use those. Okay, um, automatically quit the printer app when it's done. So again, I don't really do much print work, but it's a good idea. Um, are you sure you want to open this application? And again, I'm not really sure when that comes up, but if I clicked an application I want it to load, then I'm guessing that I would do. Display ASCII control characters using character notation. Um, I'm not really sure what that does, but an example there. 100% what that's doing, but yeah, cool. <laughs> um, automatic termination of inactive apps. So, and I'm not really sure which inactive apps would automatically terminate, but um, seems like a good idea. Uh, Health of you, I don't think I really use that, but 
Seems like a good idea. This one's pretty cool. Um, I can't really show it you, but basically, if you just to log out and you're on the login screen, if you click the uh, the clock in the top right corner, then it comes up with your IP address, host name, and some other stuff. Um, and I was, it'd be nice actually. I was wondering possibly if that could maybe come in here or here. Maybe I don't know. Or it's probably an easier way to find this information when you're logged in. Yes. So yeah, that's cool. Start again if the computer refreezes. Sorry, freezes. So that's cool. Uh, this one checking for updates daily here rather than every week. So that's good if you want to stay up to date with all the latest stuff. Enable tap click for this user. Not really sure what that does. I guess that's just tapping the mouse. Um, sorry, the touchpad. Map bottom right corner to right click. Um, this one doesn't actually work for me, but I found out that if you uh, actually click anywhere on the trackpad with two fingers, it does the, the right click, so I'm not really sure if I need that one. Swipe pages with three fingers, again that doesn't really work for me. Never mind. Um, you can change the uh, the scrolling thing from left to right, change that in line. So up, up, down, and down, up. Um, I, I quite like it, I got used to it. So, you know, not. Don't really use Bluetooth headphones, but you know what? If I ever do, it's great. Use scroll gestures. Now, I'm not really sure what this is, because normally if you zoom with, I think. Just command held down, it will zoom in, but now it doesn't seem to be doing that. Um, so, yeah, I'm not really sure about that one. Right. Disable, press and hold for keys. So, yeah, this is pretty cool. So, say if I hold a key down now, it will just stay there and it won't start doing this until I actually keep clicking it. So, yeah, that's cool. Automatically eliminate the built in MacBook, so I'm on a MacBook and that's going to automatically keep the light on. I get the light on for me on my keyboard, so that's cool. And it's going to turn it off if it's not used for five minutes. Great. Um, screenshots, so if I do shift command and let's say I think three, I'll just do a screen capture of my screen, so that should save to the desktop as a PNG. And disable the shadow, so that's there. Let's just see if it's disabled that shadow. So, if I bring this window in, I do um, shift command 4 and uh, space. I think no, I think quite, quite that. What's going on there? I'm quite sure why it's highlighting the whole window. Be doing that. Should be doing just the. It should be just doing um, this area. Um, so that doesn't look too good. So I can stop. No, let's try. Okay. Oh, this nice okay no it's just not working sure that's all right sure that's sure that was working for no, well don't get hung up on that but yeah i guess that basically what happens is if you can see the shadow here that normally gets saved on the screenshot so i'm guessing it will get rid of that. Cool. Um, and we got to screenshots. Enable subpixel font rendering on non Apple LCDs. So, we'll use that. Finder. Disable the window animations and get info on animation. Right, so let's go to the Finder again. Come on. So if you do command I, 
get the information. So I think ordinarily this would sort of zoom in from the actual location of the folder or the file that you're doing that on. So that's just disabling that. Okay. To show extensions, so yeah, again, that's cool. So we get the file extensions and all your files. Nice. Uh, allow text selection. I, I was looking forward to this one actually, but it doesn't seem to work. So, and where have I got a file? So, if I go to this file here, now. What I'd guess it would do is allow me to select this text in this preview mode, but it's not doing, it's just moving it around. So, it'd be good if uh, that did did work. Someone can help me out with that. And um, where am I up to? So, yeah. And performing the search again, this is something that would be nice, but that doesn't seem to work for me. So, say if I'm on here and I want to search for a file, let's say it's bash history. So, I want to search for bash history. But it's defaulting to this map, I want it to default to where, wherever I was. Um, so, yeah, fortunately that's not working. Um, disable the warning when changing a file extension. Let's give it a go. Change this to an open test. The warnings there. So again, I don't know if I've not executed this file properly or whatever, but it doesn't seem to be. Um, yeah, not everything seems to be working here. Mm, do -ba do. So. Avoid creating .ds store files. Um, I'm not sure where one of those would might be. Possibly here. I, I don't know what. So we see this might have already been created before I, I ran this. So I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that. Oh, actually, it's on network volumes, it's not not your local one. Okay, so I'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, that's cool. So if I have to actually have a hard drive around, but I guess if I was to connect a hard drive, then it would open the finder window automatically. That's cool. Um, show info iPhone. Yeah, this works. So we just saw that. So it's showing a bit of information there. Oh, actually, it's not doing. It was doing before. Uh, it's showing the uh, dimensions there. So, not having much luck here. And snaps a grid, it seems to be working. So, yeah, that's snapping there. Increase the spacing and the size. So, yeah, I mean, that's definitely worked because I had um, smaller. Come on, what are you doing? Had um, smaller icons before. Uh, four letter codes for the view. Numbers. Ah, yeah, that's really cool. I really like that. So I always use this this list view. I mean, you've got these other views here, but I really like this list view. So that's basically keeping that in the list. List view. Um, okay, enable highlights hover effect for the grid view on the stack from the dock. I guess that's like these sorts of things. So, what's this meant to do? Enable highlights hover. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. Neither does that. So, I'm not really sure if that's working or not. Enable spring loading for all dock items. I'm not sure I'll test that. I mean, that seems to be different than this one, unless it means 
No. No. Okay. Um, show indicator lights for open applications. So I think this this is one of the things that the uh, Mac and Apple are looking to possibly get rid of. I still quite like this having um, these little indicators there to show you which applications are open. Okay, so that's cool. Enable 2D dock. So that doesn't look like that's work because that looks pretty 3D to me. Um, we've got some hot corners here. So I've set myself a little to do here. Uh, this, these are the ones I use. So my bottom left screen I used to have the desktop so I can get to the desktop nice and quick. The top right expose so I can get to my different applications. And then my bottom right I have as my screensaver. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for now. I'm going to I'll carry on. Let's see, oh, there's not that much actually. Let's go for it. It's a firing WebKit homepage, so that's going to change that to about blank. Let's see if that works. Nope, that's gone to there. No, do do do. Backspace, disable, thumbnail, cache, remove useless icons. Oh, again, that, like I don't use Safari all that often, so we should sure also use that for testing. Really. Doopy do, enable develop menu, web inspector. Don't really need that because generally works and Safari is alright. Not really encountered any bugs in Safari that are just specific to Safari, but. Um, Chrome seems to do the job from it. Doopy doo. Okay, I'm not really sure about that. iTunes. Don't really use iTunes. I'm going to put to do here to check iTunes 11, which was downloaded, which is nice. Well done, Apple. Oh, it's actually quick, which it hasn't been for a while. Uh, mail. Don't use terminal. Use UTF-8. Cool. Got a. Yep. So text edit documents. Let's use plain text. That's cool. Do we do? Allow installing user scripts via GitHub or Gist. I've not really delved into that yet. I don't really do that. Seems cool. And yeah, a lot of more stuff I don't really use. So yeah, anyway, hope that helps someone and hope someone can uh, possibly help me with some of the things I'm not sure of. Cheers.